In the last two years, marami sa atin nagtayo ng sariling negosyo. Madaming ginawa yung mga personal recipes nila, kinonvert para maging food business, madaming nag-online selling, at madami din ginamit yung driving skills nila at yung personal na sasakyan pang delivery driving. Siyempre, sa pagtaas ng number ng mga negosyo, tumaas din ang demand para sa tinatawag nating business mobility, lalo na sa mga MSME or micro, small, and medium enterprises. Maraming options para sa reliable, capable, and affordable na truck. At ang pinakabago dito ay ang Tata Intra V10. Tingnan natin kung ano ma-offer ng truck na ito para sa mga bagong negosyante. Ang Tata brand medyo bago sa karamihan ng mga Pilipino. Pero make no mistake about it, this is one of the biggest truck brands in the entire world. They're present in over 125 countries. Here in the Philippines, ilang taon na rin sila. Ngayon, being isang very very big truck company, marami silang models depending on the need. Kailangan mo ba ng tractor head o kaya dump truck? Meron sila. Kailangan mo ng passenger car pang araw-araw? Meron din sila. Kung ang negosyo mo naman ay nangangailangan ng mobility, ito yon, ang Intra V10. Kung makikita nyo, ang Intra V10 ay isang compact na truck. Perfect na size ito para sa mga personal business. Ang haba, 4.3 meters. Ang lapad, 1.6 meters. At yung tangkad nitong cab, 1.9 meters. Ibig sabihin, madali itong ipasok sa mga narrow roads o kaya mga eskinita sa syudad man o sa probinsya. Ang wheelbase nito, 2.25 meters. Ibig sabihin nun, mas maganda ang maneuverability, lalo na sa mga makikitid na kalye. Yung version na pinadala sa atin ni Tata Philippines ay yung drop side truck version. Kung papansin nyo, malaki yung bed niya at ang importante dito, kasyang-kasya ang buong 4x8 na plywood boards dito sa likod, no problem. Now, ang advantage ng isang drop side body ay ang versatility nito dahil sa mga latches na to. Ito yung mga heavy duty latches ng drop side. Ibig sabihin, pwede mong ibaba yung side, pwede mo rin ibaba yung likod. Kung mapapansin nyo naman, sa gantong configuration, napakadaling mag-load ng mga mabibigat na items. Kung sako ng bigas man yung kailangan nyo i-load, no problem. Sako ng semento, balikbayan box, o kaya mga galon para sa inyong water refilling station. Pero syempre, marami pa rin mga Pilipino hinahanap ang mga ibang klasing body. Meron yung mga aluminum van na version ng Tata Intra V10, at meron din yung FB body style na mas importante sa market natin. Kasi kasha doon ay 15 na katao. 12 sa likod at tatlo sa harapan. Nagagawa ni Tata ito dahil mayroon silang mga partner na bodybuilder. Hindi yung sa muscle ha, yung gumagawa ng body sa likod ng mga truck. Kung alam mo ang mga road conditions sa India, alam mo hindi nagkakalayo sa road conditions natin. Matindi ang traffic, matindi rin ang lubak at maraming kaling mga hindi tapos. Kaya mga truck manufacturers kailangan i-extra tibay yung kanilang mga sasakyan tulad nitong Intra V10. Ngayon, kung titignan natin ang mga ibang sasakyan sa class ng Intra V10, kung tignan nyo yung frame nun, maraming mga weld, maraming mga dugtong. Kasi ganun ginagawa ng mga car manufacturers yon. Kumukuha sila ng mga tubular steel, i-welding nila together para magkaroon ng isang buong frame. Pero ang ginawa ni Tata, kakaiba. Ginamit nila ang hydroforming process. Ang resulta nun, halos one piece from front to back yung mga chassis sections nito. Hindi mo kailangan i-welding tulad ng mga ibang truck dyan. Kasi parang isin mo, parang mga extension cord yan eh. Pag maraming mga dugtong, maraming mga weak points. Dito, kung titignan mo, wala ganong mga extension na ganun. Dito sa auto industry, medyo car geeks kami sa engineering kaya hindi namin ganong napapasadahan yung design ng sasakyan. Pero itong sa Intra V10, you know what? Inefortan talaga nila yung look ng vehicle because look at the headlights, these multi-reflectors, they look very sharp. The shape of the front, the aerodynamic bumper, the lower bumper, the, the abang for the fog lamps actually, well, abang talaga for fog lamps because this one does not come with the fog lamps yet. But you look at it, the wide windshield, it just gives off a nice, very modern impression to customers and that's going to be a good thing. Over here on the side, you can see the really chunky side mirror, which is actually very good. 13-inch wheels, you've got the battery right here for easy access. But over on the front passenger side, just behind there, you'll see the snorkel, which is going to be very useful in the Philippine market because, well, we're already here. But one feature I really like here 
is the door handle. Because normally door handles, they go up like that in this class of vehicle. In this one, kind of feels more natural, more well thought out. To be honest with you, in this class of vehicle, we don't really talk about the interior much because there's not much usually to talk about. It's very basic, but not in the case of the Inter V10 because look at the seats, look at the dashboard, the doors. It's actually very nicely designed. They have a nice design here going on with the dashboard. If they put this into a passenger car, like a hatchback or something, it would not look out of place. It's very neat and very functional. You've got round AC vents here, pockets up there, a bigger pocket there for, as your upper glove, I guess, pocket. It also has a lockable glove compartment down there, which is very good. The shifter is mounted up here, the handbrake up here. What that does is it frees up space here in the middle so you can have a three-seater. If you notice, right there in the middle, you have an AC system. Yes, this one does have AC. You look down there in the middle as well, you've got power windows for this model. So, ah, there you go. It does work. Now, up here you have your audio system, AM, FM, but it does have an auxiliary port and a USB drive uh, socket, which I don't have a USB drive on me, but we'll put it to the test later on. Now, steering right here, it's fixed. It's got power steering. It's got a very nice little horn. One feature that's really nice here, the headlamp levelers right here. Actually, over in India, headlamp levelers are kind of standard on a lot of their vehicles, which is kind of a good thing. Now, if we look here in the back, well, you've got your tools over here uh, for the jack and stuff like that. And also the engine control unit. I think this is a direct injection Motronic control unit, which is kind of cool. It's right here in the back, easy access. Now, what, what makes this rather different from a lot of vehicles in its class is that you cannot access the engine from under the front seats. Again, cab over vehicle, the engine is under the front seats for maximum efficiency, it gives you the most space in the back. But normally, you'd be able to flip it over and then have access panels there. But uh, in, not in this one. You've got access, however, to fluids. If you want to do servicing, well, you have to do it from here in the back. Now, enough talk. Let's go out and drive it. This Inter V10, man, it's bringing back a lot of memories. Because that is a 90s, uh, meron kami ng FB. Dun ako natutong magdrive ng manual talaga, and yung column shift mayon. And yung feel nito, it's actually quite similar, but there are a lot of things that have already been updated, as we can clearly see from the dashboard. But you know, the steering of this one is a lot better. It's got power steering. The steering wheel is actually thicker as well, which is you know nice. But also, instead of a column shift, it has a dash-mounted shifter. Now, the advantage of that is that it's like a conventional vehicle or SUV, but it also frees up a lot of space here in the middle, just like a column shifter. Powering the Intra V10 is a 798cc turbo diesel engine. It's only two cylinders, yes. Parang ang cute ng makina. Pero don't underestimate it, ha? Kasi being a turbo diesel means that the torque is very much down low. Like at 1,750 RPM, you've already got max torque. And that's going to be a good thing, especially when you've got load uh, on the bed already. That means it can kind of, it can really push it forward, no problem. Of course, just be sure not to overload it. Now, as you can see, driving it around, it's going to be bouncing around quite a bit because I've got no cargo in the back. That's just the way it is. A vehicle like this, hindi naman talaga pang comfort yan. Pero, Overall, it's actually quite okay. Being a cab over vehicle and being a very compact one, the visibility is actually really good. I like that I can see all around me. The mirrors are really nice. Malinaw talaga yung glass, which is good. Yung clutch ito, magan actually. Para siyang hindi truck na, na clutch talaga, which is good. Yung, again, power steering, very, very nice. You can actually steer this one-handed, no problem, minimal effort. Now, once we get to a clearing, let's try to demonstrate the power of this. Let's see what it's got. So, there you go. And then, yeah, it does have some torque down low, which is, again, very, very nice. Now, it does have a five-speed manual transmission, which is kind of normal for something like this, uh, which is actually 
re responds very, very well. The clutch take up is very good. One thing you want to note is that the speed is limited to 80 kilometers per hour on this vehicle for safety. I mean, that's going to be a good thing either way. Now, in terms of fuel efficiency, in the internal tests conducted by Tata, they say this can do up to 16 kilometers per liter. Well, hope if those are the numbers that it's actually going to get, then that's going to be a good thing for business owners. Being a very compact uh, cab over vehicle makes this very ideal for roads like this. You know, pansin makitid, masikip, maraming tao. And good na nakikita mo lahat because ang liwanag ng mga windows, maganda yung mga mirrors nito, at yung driving position mo, maayos para makita mo talaga lahat. But it's really the maneuverability of this which is really nice because driving it around here, you can drive confidently that you won't get stuck. And right now, oh, I'm being asked to move over because there's another big truck, much bigger truck, coming through. The Tata Intra V10 really does have a lot going for it. It's practical, it's very modern inside, it's well equipped, it's capable, but most importantly, it's robust. They listen to a lot of their customer feedback for a vehicle like this, and that's a good thing. They're already 100,000 strong. That's how many owners of the Intra V10 there are all over the world. Actually, the Philippines will be the first left-hand drive market for this vehicle. Now, what's going to be the real key for the Intra V10 will be maintenance and the ownership experience. That's why this Intra V10, well, it comes with a special service package free for the first 45,000 kilometers. That means free labor, free oil, and free oil filters. But also the warranty. It's three years and 120,000 kilometers. They actually extended it for Intra V10 customers over here in the Philippines. And I know a lot of people will really appreciate that. Now we come to the payload rating. Tata says this drop side version, it has a payload rating of 800 kilograms passengers and cargo net. So, that means with me driving, it's 700. But nevertheless, you can go on and visit your nearest Tata dealership and test drive one for yourself. This drop side version, it retails for 545,000 pesos, which is actually a really good price for something like this. You can also opt for the other version, depending on which ones are available. And the last time I spoke to Tata, they don't have any problems with unit supplies. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com.